Hey, welcome back everyone to Sunny Morning. We're coming to you live from the El Dorado Hotel. This is an absolute paradise in the Riviera Maya. My name is Gil Rios. Gonna give you some ideas on sports. And this is my very good friend, Elliot Bowman here. Yeah, Elliot, yeah. how are you? you? I'm great, man. You got that right. This is picture perfect down here today. I mean, what, 28 degrees? How, what color is that ocean, That's Gil? Celsius. Yeah. The ocean has tones of about seven shades of turquoise blue and literally, literally about 50 meters from where we're sitting right now. So, you know, we're going to get our swimmers on after this, right? And uh, <laughs> suck back a couple of Coronas. <laughs> <laughs> Snorkeling gear. <laughs> Maybe we'll make it to Cozumel Island if we have too many Coronas. <laughs> but getting back our feet back on land and, you know, something else, what you really have come up with. This is a story that you haven't heard this story yet, okay? So this is a first. I want to call it a first but it's often something that people are not totally aware of, even people that are fans. Have you ever heard of Magic Johnson Enterprises? I, I'm gonna be honest, I hadn't heard about it until you talked to me, you phoned me from LA earlier this week and told me you'd been doing some digging around. Well, I think Magic Johnson, what he did was he raised a bar to get athletes from turning into businessmen and getting off of the court and turning their end of their career. Their careers aren't very long, right? Right. So he, 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 what he did was he was forced out of retirement in 1994 and he made 20 cold calls. These calls were all to very well-to-do season ticket holders for the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, he knew, he knew all of them would gladly pick up the phone and hear him out because uh, he was quite the wizard in the NBA back in the day. The likes of Jack Nicholson, right? You can imagine him getting a phone call. <laughs> Jack front Nicholson row, would love to get a call from Center, him. right? right. <laughs> uh, but what this did was it actually blazed his successful business trail, uh, which actually has inspired other pro athletes since then. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And wouldn't you believe right now today, Magic Johnson's net worth is slowly reaching one billion dollars no way i mean he's going to be a unicorn they're a billion dollar <laughs> businessman huh billion he, dollar businessman there he goes back in the day 1994 to now that's just 24 years 24 a years net worth yeah very shrewd very smart uh, and, and one, one thing in, in, in his business career mm. uh it was seeing opportunity where others ignored uh, particularly in the urban uh, communities uh, that was a lesson he wanted to convey when he went to what is called the Upfront Summit. Uh, this is a crowd of very, very smart venture capitalists and uh, entrepreneurs, mainly in the tech mm. field. And he absolutely captivated them with his ideas. So the urban business, you know, spotting urban the opportunity, the gaps in the market for urban people. Exactly. Yeah, and then... He learned himself as well. You know, he, he actually had a very solid piece of advice mm. uh, when one of those phone calls was uh, to Michael Ovitz. Now, Michael Ovitz, uh, he's one of the biggest talent agencies in, in Hollywood. And his advice to, to Magic Johnson was simple. Surround yourself with the very best. That's what he said. Yeah. And when Michael, uh, I'm sorry, Michael Irvin, that's his name, Magic Johnson. I mean, he, when he was at this summit, it was probably the first thing he said, I fired everybody. He fired everyone. All the hangers on. Yeah. He, he says, I have the best money manager, I have the best accountant, and I have the best lawyer. And uh, this crowd uh, later turned out to give him an ovation. Uh, and it was, as you say, the best thing he could have ever done. So, I mean... Obviously now, with all of this success under his belt, he's starting to get phone calls, not just from 20, you know, diehard LA Lakers fans. Now he's getting phone calls from business, community. I mean, go on. I mean, tell me who else has he been building business with? Well, when you have that kind of uh, connections and you have that kind of money and you have that kind of savvy, uh, yeah. clearly he's probably rejecting offers. Uh, but his business career actually started uh, with a couple of Pepsi bottling plants and that eventually expanded into shopping centers movie theaters 
all in urban markets. Uh, his business acumen, Sean, mm -hmm. uh, really, when he met the uh, CEO of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, uh, there was a vital lesson that, that he learned. Mm -hmm. And he actually told uh, Mr. Schultz, he, he said, look, Howard, Latinos and blacks, uh, they like coffee too. <laughs> good message. A very good message. Yeah. And what they did was they went in 50-50. Uh, this is Magic Johnson yeah. and, and Howard Schultz uh, in developing a chain of Starbucks, all in undeserved and overlooked urban areas. So you're going to, I mean, let me see if I get this right. So take Starbucks and puts a signature on certain stores of Starbucks in urban sites. Exactly, and there was one thing that he had to do that was hard to convince uh, someone like, like Schultz. Yeah, yeah. He says, you, 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 gotta, you gotta change uh, the music. Oh, and yeah. he says, I, I can't have scones. He says, we, we, we change them for, for, for sweet potato pie and suck it to me cakes and take away the sound of Hootie and the Blowfish, put Michael Jackson on. Uh, this was done yeah. in this new market called urban cities. And it has flourished. Mm. By 2010, they had built 105 Starbucks locations all in urban communities. Unreal, unreal. What a great success story, you know, and... That one deal alone mm. netted them $100 million in profit. So that's that 10% of the net worth you mentioned, right? Hey, I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> I'm gonna do urban, urban, find some urban right. areas of Mexico, man. Here's a question though. Will All Mr. Right. Schultz take a cold call from you? I don't think so. I'm not sure he's <laughs> am I number one fan on Mexico News Network right now on Sunday morning, but you could we might we might have uh, we might have some wealthy investors to be talking to soon. But um, at the end of it all, yeah. what he did was he shifted the old thought process to a change in demographic power. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually said minorities uh, that only used to play on the field can now ride and sign the big checks too. And he's very proud of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, and look at what he did with Howard man. Schultz, you know. He, he, what but, a man to get his attention like that, you know. And having him change. The music, <laughs> the, the, the scones. The desserts. The desserts. <laughs> you know I, what scones are. Yeah, I know what scones are, man. So, I mean, we basically, I mean, I'd love to see more players. I'm not just NBA. I mean, it's in soccer. There's a lot of problems in terms of poverty for stars when they, it's kind of like they're getting on the bench years, you know, and then they're not sure what to do next. Then they go and blow those fortunes. They retire young, like you said. And it's happening. Yeah. And it's happening because of people like Magic Johnson. He's the inspiration. People He's like Michael Jordan. Illuminating the and way. Inspiration. And yeah, it's yeah. all over now because athletes are getting paid lots of money. So they need, the, like you say, the right people, good financial advisors around them, good lawyers to protect their nest eggs, invest after the sport, stay successful, right? Think beyond the sport. Think beyond the field. Think into the future. And like you say, he's something quite earth, earthy for him, urban, urban brands. We hear a lot about urban clothing's work, but you know, from a sports star to make it into the urban jungle environment, he's cut through it, man. Hey, look at LeBron James. Yeah, we'll bring you Michael, more about Michael that. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know more of the stars, more of the players that you want more of up close personal biographies reviews on, because this stuff fascinates me. I love this man. This should be all over Fortune magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Send us some some messages on Mexico News Network. Yeah, we've got our fan page up on Facebook. You can tweet us, you can go on Instagram with us. We're all over social media. Come and join us here on the couch. You can get through chat to Gilbert. He'll be back with us on Friday. You've got to jet back off to Los Angeles. I know tonight you've got some stuff to settle with Jack Nicholson, right? They're at the Staples Center. So uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll be back with us on Friday. We'll be back with you tomorrow with more top stories, more breaking news, cookery, midday lunch, don't miss it. We'll be back. We'll see you tomorrow. See you soon. Adios. Hasta la vista.